Let's dig deeper now on the state of Republican politics following the midterm elections. Joining us now is pollster and strategist Frank Luntz. Frank, we appreciate you sharing part of your afternoon with us. Uh, a lot of Republicans are on pins and needles awaiting this potential special announcement from Donald Trump next Tuesday. Some advisors are urging him to postpone, at least until after that early December Senate runoff in Georgia. Um, how do you think Trump might impact that race? Uh, it could be significant. It was significant two years ago when Donald Trump went down there and said that the Georgia election was stolen and therefore your vote doesn't matter. And thousands of Republicans stayed home as a result and they lost two seats that they otherwise would have won. In the polling that we did in 2020, the generic ballot was in favor of the Republicans, but the actual vote was not. And that's because Republican voters stayed home. They don't want Trump to be blamed for what happened then. And they don't, frankly, want Trump to be blamed for what happened on Tuesday night when a whole lot of Senate candidates who could have won didn't because the feeling was they simply were not the strongest candidates. They had flaws and the election slipped away from them. And it's interesting that Republicans picked up seats in the House, haven't picked up seats in the Senate and the former president's being blamed for that. And Frank, if you are Herschel Walker, do you want Trump coming down to the Peach State to, to rally and campaign with you? You do, but you don't want him in Atlanta or the Atlanta suburbs. Hmm. You want him in the outer parts of the state, which is harder to get to. It requires more work. Donald Trump is still the number one Republican in America today. There's no doubt about it. But his overall patina has been flawed considerably, or darkened considerably. And in the Atlanta, the Atlanta suburbs, he is a negative. And this is something that his candidates did not really understand, and I'm not convinced that he understands either, that for every one voter who thinks he's God, you've got one and a half who thinks he's horrible. And it had an impact in Pennsylvania. Uh, it had an impact in New Hampshire. You're watching that impact right now in Arizona. Trump is brilliant at giving, at providing the margin of victory in a primary. But he is kryptonite when it comes to the general election. That's fascinating. It, it, one bright spot for Republicans, if we're looking at Tuesday night, was New York, where they picked up, I believe it was four House seats. They, they swept Long Island. Uh, they kicked out uh, Sean Patrick Maloney, the DCCC chair. Um, what do you think was key to their success in uh, blue New York? Uh, frustration, not just with the economy, but frustration with crime and the feeling that the Democrats were not doing enough to keep people safe and secure. In fact, that's where the Republicans did best. People who lived in suburbs, who knew what was going on in New York City, lived away from that and chose to live away for a reason. They wanted to keep their families safe and they could afford to do so. And those voters switched the Republicans. And the other key factor was Trump. He wasn't there. He wasn't involved. He wasn't engaged. He wasn't picking winners and losers. He was not part of the process in the places the Pennsylvania, uh, uh, Arizona, New Hampshire, places that Trump was involved in. He did not. The Republicans did not do well. Places where Trump did not campaign in, such as New York, the Republicans did quite well. So if, if what you're saying is that Donald Trump is kryptonite, how would you counsel Republicans to shift away from him? I mean, it, he still wins primaries for a lot of these candidates. Um, how can they be successful in primaries without the former president? Uh, that's a very legitimate question. That's something that Republicans have to decide. Uh, in the end, Donald Trump has every right to run, and he has, in fact, it's more than that. We need to acknowledge that he's still the most popular Republican nationwide. But when he attacks the very popular governor of Virginia, and he's been going after the extremely popular governor of Florida, you're going to watch Trump's numbers start to deteriorate. It's one thing when he's attacking Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden. Republicans expect that. But when he's attacking the next generation of Republican leadership, mark my words, the party's going to turn against him. And the angrier he gets at other conservative Republicans, the more that they're going to punish him with a loss of support and a loss of faith and confidence in his message and what he, what he brings to the political process. I, if I were advising him right now, I would tell him to take a very long vacation, simply disappear for the next 30 days, 
because he's destroying himself every single day by attacking Ron DeSantis, uh, Glenn Youngkin, people who other Republicans uh, respect and appreciate and voted for in big numbers in the previous elections. Uh, I am skeptical that Donald Trump is going to disappear for 30 days or or any amount of time anytime soon. Uh, We'll see whether he makes that announcement next Tuesday. Um, Frank Luntz, thanks so much for the time. 